<laughs> I showed you the cutaway, those two gears that are coupled to the shafts. The front shaft is going to be turning much faster than the rear, and you'll see the front wheels will probably do four, five rotations, and then they'll slow down. And the rear is going to push the vehicle right up the hill. Then we're going to put the rears in here, and the fronts are only going to have the friction of the diamond plate, which to be fair, is not that much. It's not as good as this. And what's going to happen is the rears are going to spin, and then you'll see they'll start to slow down, and the fronts will speed up, and he'll, uh, Chris will walk it right up. Okay, Chris, go ahead. So we're going to cradle the front wheels. Okay. Back off the brakes just a tad. Okay. So now we're, we've created a little bit more resistance. We're sitting in the divot. Chris is going to give throttle. But unlike the lady who drove in the video, Chris is going to sustain the throttle, create momentum, get the clutch pack to bind. Go ahead. off the brakes. So is that a pretty easy walk? Yep. Well, you had a ton of traction at the rear, right? Keep going, guys. Right there. So now, again, we're going to try and create a little bit more resistance. The front's got traction. The rears don't, right? It's almost zero coefficient. As we get wheel spin, watch what happens. Go ahead. just walks it up. So the mechanical center locking dip, is it effective? Absolutely. And you saw the rear wheel had to do three, four spins, and we got lock up, and we started walking the vehicle up, front wheel drive. So from a north-south, easy to walk, right? It's 40, 60, but easy to go up to 70, 85, and we can play with that all day long. Now let's make it more challenging. We're gonna walk it down. Now what we're going to do is we're going to expose the vehicle to probably the worst case scenario. Only one tire sits on firm ground. All three other wheels are going to sit on the rollers. So we're going to expose... <coughs> so we're going to actually create at the rear Right, where 60% of our torque is going, we're going to nullify that. And then up front, we're going to create more. Quattro is going to transfer more torque to the front. It's going to get to the center, to the front differential, and then it's going to look left and right. It's going to say, what's easier, move the car or just spin the wheel out? So what element is going to intervene to make sure that we get equal traction side to side? EDL. And what does EDL use to do it? ABS and traction control. So Chris, walk her up. Now you want to stay here. You want to watch this wheel. Because we know that one's got traction, right? We know what that looks like. Bring it on up. Drive all the way through. Up. Ease the brakes back. We're going to try and get the rear tire in the divot. We've got about a foot. Okay. So now in theory, the rears are really going to spin just like before, but now we've got a liability here where the, the diff in front, it's an open differential. There are no clutch packs there, so it's going to be EDL on either side that determines where the torque goes. Go ahead. One tire's got grip. We've got a mechanical system that flushes out what's happening north-south, sends torque to the front, the front diff is open, we can get a little bit of wheel spin, we mitigate it by using EDL, the ABS traction control, and it sends the torque to the one tire that had not great, but okay traction, and it walked the vehicle up. 